Hey everybody, welcome to the Joe's Bot Podcast. Today's date is 11-11-2020, Veterans Day. We're here joined by none other than JT Yarns, owner and CEO of Edify and Empower. Welcome JT Yarns. What's going on? What's going on? It's happening, man. Uh, this is our first podcast and I'm pretty excited about it. What do you think, man? Hey, listen, man, I am extremely excited. Uh, I was excited when you when you hit me up. Uh, and uh, people say, man, when when it's time, just jump and we'll, we'll, we're going to build the wings on the way down. I know you heard that uh, uh, about a month ago. Now we, we, we heard that when we was in uh, we was in residency. So, you know, we about to build the wings on the way down. <laughs> man, you know what? I'm very excited uh, that you decided to jump on this. JT Yarns, man, uh, from Florida A&M University, Rattlers, go Rattlers! Tell tell me a little bit about yourself, man. Where 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 you're at and and how you feel? Uh, tell me a little bit about your background. But before we jump into that, man, we just had an amazing amazing turn of events here in the United States of America with our 2020 election. Uh, so before we jump into your background, man, tell me a little bit of what are your thoughts. On the election um so you know i'm definitely excited about the changing of the guard so to speak uh, i'm very hopeful um you know that everything goes well excited um specifically let me say this for um, little black girls man this is a monumental uh moment for them a moment in history uh that you know they seldom come by uh and so uh, i'm excited for that because this adds fuel to the fire uh, for little uh, black girls to be able to be successful, man, to dream big. Uh, and so I definitely want to, you know, make note of that. Um, but this, you know, this is a moment in history, man. Uh, the people have spoken uh, and, you know, the United States have let people know what they really want. Uh, and so that that in itself really excites me. Uh, I'm just interested to see how, you know, once the change in the guards really happen, like what things will really look like. Um, you, out of all people, understand, you know, how an election process work, how campaign work, uh, you know, and I know, you know, like people talk a good game, you know, until it's time to really do some work. So I really want to see what the work looks like, um, because let's be honest, people are out of time. So um, <laughs> let's, let's get to work, you know, so that's where I'm at with it. Are, are you saying that people are liars naturally? Uh, you know, people lie. Nah, I wasn't that <laughs> You know, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> what I would say is people uh, tend to stress the truth a lot uh, uh, and they're not really honest. And so, uh, you know, from what I can tell, cause I, I've never been in politics like that, um, you know, but it's a, from what I can see, it's a brutal game, you know? Uh, and uh, Sometimes I feel like people are just not really genuinely honest. They just say whatever feels good, whatever sounds good so they can get somewhere. And I see career politicians, um, and I don't see a real, you know, a lot of change. So that's just me. Man, okay. Um, you know, the song that came into my head was that women lie, people lie. I oh, know how, how, how does that song go? Women lie, men lie, women lie, men lie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh anyways, man, career politicians. That's a great topic of conversation. Tell me about that, man. Uh, do you, are you for term limits? Are you against term limits? Uh, I'm definitely for term limits, bro. Um, I don't think no one person uh, should hold an office for an extended period of time like that. Um, you know, whatever the term limit, two years, four years, six years, you know, eight years, whatever. Uh, we have to give uh, new leaders an opportunity to grow and to lead um, and take on these positions. Uh, leadership, as you know, and we, we would definitely get into this topic, uh, it's always developing, it's always growing. Uh, and so if you having the same leader for 14, 15, 16 years, you know, what's really growing and developing? If that leader isn't growing, I'm pretty sure the organization, um, the, the followers, the teams are not growing if the leader is not growing. So, um, and, we, and again, like we have to give people an opportunity to, um, to lead and develop. Uh, what good is a leader if they're not developing and influencing other people? So uh, I'm all for term limits. Give somebody else an opportunity to lead, see where they're going to, uh, take the mantle, so to speak. Yeah, that that was actually one of the biggest things I kept on hearing in this last election. Uh, you know, and 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 they were talking about career politicians and and uh, this individual that got elected, Joe Biden. 
Uh, he's been in office for over 40 years is what I was hearing now. But, uh, you know, hey, the people have spoken. The people have determined that that's who they want um, through the electoral college process, right? Which there's a lot of controversy in regards to that. Am I correct in saying that? Yeah, you're correct. <laughs> I mean, what comes to my mind back is uh, the Al Gore election. That Remember that hanging, Chad? Yeah. Man, and that was in your state. <laughs> Florida does Florida things, bro. Like, <laughs> Florida do so. It, it's crazy over here, bro. Um, you know, those that don't know, I'm, I'm from Florida. Um, you know, South Florida to be specific. And I'm going to just tell you, South Florida is different from other areas of Florida. So, um, and, and Miami is its own state. So, <laughs> let's be <laughs> about that. Uh, but yeah, Florida do Florida things, bro. And um, there are a lot of things that don't surprise me um, when it comes to Florida, man. Uh, it's just it's just kind of the nature of it. Uh, as I, you know, continue to learn and grow, man, and study, you know, I always try to look at, you know, behaviors and really figure out, like, you know, why are these things kind of going on and, you know, why are people this way and, and that type of thing. So, you know, hopefully um, Florida will... Uh, grow into something different than what it is. Um, I grew up in a rural area. Um, uh, we call it we call it the muck where I'm from, uh, which is like Western Palm Beach County. So those that follow the NFL, my cousin Anquan Bolden is from there. Um, Janoris Jenkins is from there. Uh, Pernell McPhee. Uh, so we've had a couple of people, you know, in the league, and there are many others whom you know I haven't named. But um, and no disrespect to any of them or anything like that. But uh, the muck has produced a lot of phenomenal people. Uh, you know, but from that area, man, that, you know, is poverty stricken and things like that. And so we don't have a lot of opportunities coming from over there. But when you think about that, when people think about Florida, they don't think about, you know, um, poverty stricken areas and things like that. You know, they think about all the high life, you know, the lights, the beaches, you know, those type of things. But when it comes to the real groundwork, you know, there are things that get missed. Yeah, you know, it's funny you say that because uh, I think of Florida, and, and I always equated to music. Uh, growing up, I, I, I was a DJ and uh, music has influenced a lot of my life. Uh, but I think of Florida, I think of uh, Miami bass. I think of DJ Laz. I think of uh, ew, Mr. Mr. 305 <laughs> before he was Mr. Worldwide. You know, like there's just so much, you know, uh, but, but definitely has its own tastes of music and its own tastes of areas. Now, you mentioned you're from rural Florida. What is the state of the nation in rural county, Florida, right now? Um, in, in regards, in regards to education, in regards to um, hospitals, you name it. So, um, with me being like a little removed from um, a lot of it, just from experience, man, really growing up, um, and then even looking at now, so like growing up. Uh, growing up in Pahokee, you know, we had a hospital. My mom actually worked at that hospital um, back in the day. Now that hospital has been demolished. Like it doesn't even exist anymore. Uh, you know, they have since built um, another hospital in between uh, Pahokee and Belgrade, which are two, um, uh, I, don't, I don't want to use the word rivalry cities or anything like that, but they're, they're neighboring communities, um, which is inclusive in the muck. So when people talk about the muck, they talk about Belgrade, Pahokee, and South Bay. You hit those three, and then you'll you know you hit a little bit of Clewiston. Very rarely will you ever hit Canal Point, but um, you know being from those areas, bro, uh, I felt like you know going off to college that you know educationally uh, we were you know we were disadvantaged and behind. Uh, it's not to say that anybody is you know like uh, not smart or anything like that, but there are just a lot of things in terms of education that we didn't have. Um, you know, growing up, you know, Avid wasn't, wasn't a real thing um, at that point. IB was just kind of kicking in, you know, as I was kind of heading out the door. Um, you know, now they have like STEM, uh, STEM uh, programs and things like that, robotics. Um, they just have a lot more advantages now uh, over there uh, through, I think, grants and things like that. Um, you got to think administration staff was a lot different too when I was growing up. Um, but I still feel like there can be more done. Uh, you know, they had a middle school uh, built, you know, that I, it ain't, it's not state of the art, but it's definitely a lot better because growing up, we, the middle and high school was combined. So uh, we definitely have a middle school now, 
uh, and they rebuilt one of the elementary schools. But the elementary school I went to, uh, you know, it hasn't been rebuilt or anything like that. So I, I think educationally, man, there, there's a lot of work to be done. Um, shout out to, you know, the, the educators, man, because uh, you all do not get paid the worth. <laughs> I was just thinking today, my question was going to be like, what should like just across the board, like teacher starting salary should be across the board? Mm-hmm. You know, of course we got to accommodate for like cost of living and stuff like that. Cause I remember, um, I can't remember the guy name, but he was from California. He was um, the administrator. And he was talking about how, um, you know, how they did PDD, um, you know, incentives and stuff like that. I remember him talking about that. And so I was like, yo, this seemed like a dope idea. But at the same time, you know, we asking teachers to get PDD, but we're not even paying them, you know, uh, a reasonable wage, man, to just do the regular work. But we want them to grow and develop. You see what I'm saying? Like, right. there's, there is a disconnect, if you will, uh, as, it, as it pertains to that, uh, which does follow them around the job satisfaction. And you and I have already talked about, you know, um, you know, the two factor theory in terms of motivation um, and job satisfaction and really, you know, pay is, you know, is, is one of those motivators. You know, um, and you know we got to pay people what they were. It, it sure is. I mean, that's 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 another topic of conversation in which in which can get very heated, uh, very passionate about because it's very personal, right? And, and individuals want to get paid uh, what they perceive their worth is. Uh, so so there's definitely a, a, a tug of war happening in in, in our society in which uh, let's just take educators for example. You know the amount of work they put in and you spoke to that um they feel that there should be an increase in pay and you know what hey more power to them man i mean they put in a lot of work they are definitely the building blocks of our nation in in terms of our future so shout out to all the teachers out there for sure holding it down especially during corona <laughs> let's talk about corona man what how has corona impacted you man like i mean I know how it's impacted me, but how is it impacting JT Yarns in Florida, man? Man, I'm going to be honest with you, man. This is going to sound like super crazy, um, but I'm an introvert, man. So, you know, I, I'm going to say you're being at the <laughs> I, I can't speak for everybody, man, but what I will say is um, it has definitely changed the dynamic um, and it has changed the work environment. Uh, for a while, like, you know, with my current job, so I'm currently a, a program coordinator over an evidence-based team program. And so I knew all along that I could work from home. Um, prior to this job, I was an investigator with the Department of Children and Families. In other states, they call it Family and Children Services. Um, being able to do that job and being in the field the majority of the time and stuff like that, I understand uh, the dynamics of work in the work environment and because I moved around a lot. So, you know, Corona has really uh, changed what we consider a work environment. It has changed the dynamic of what we really consider work. What it has also done in terms of leadership is it has forced leaders to really um, lead differently, uh, take an assessment of really what's going on. And there are a lot of leaders who are struggling and they're struggling because they believe in being management. You know, they believe in, you know, trying to manage people like processes as opposed to really leading people uh, and not being able to see people and physically touch them and monitor their behaviors. There are a lot of, uh, I don't even want to call them leaders, there are a lot of supervisors who are currently struggling with that and it's taken them six, eight months to really make an adjustment, which calls into question their management style, right? Uh, and so, you know, uh, Corona has shut down, you know, businesses, man, business has closed down. Um, but what it has done is for a lot of people, man, it has ignited a fire in them that they've never had before. Um, I had one of my homies tell me, he was like, man, I, I need like the beginning of the corona to happen again because I've had these ideas and, you know, I started, you know, my business and, you know, now I'm just, you know, bowed down a little bit. And so we we talked about that. We did some coaching about that. But um, there are a lot of people that started businesses, man, within the last eight months. You know, business is closed and then business is open. Um, and there are a lot of people that are um, that have u- has used this time very wisely. Uh, they use the time to develop themselves, um, find their gift or their talent, um, and really realize what's important to them. Uh, I, I told people at the beginning of this that now you about to feel like what it what it feels like to deal with you. 
like you have to deal with you now at this point because there there's nobody else to deal with when you yeah. got to work from home you know you you don't have a lot of social interaction now you about to now you about to figure out what you really made of uh, and so you know that has really transpired man but what it has also done is limit our um social interactions and and there are a lot of people that are struggling uh which leads to additional mental health issues and things like that and so um that's why we see a lot of um, therapy uh, and, and therapists becoming more and more relevant at this point. I mean, they became relevant prior to this or should have been more relevant prior to this. But now, uh, because you got to deal with you, it's a different ball game in terms of mental health because you can't really hide. You, you, you know, you have to deal with it. Brother, I tell you what, man. Uh, so you are the owner and CEO of Edify and Empower. However, you you also do some coaching on the side, or is that a part of all of this? Yeah, it's a part of it. Um, so I, I developed um, Edifying Empowerment about uh, we in 2020 now, so about two years ago, going on three years. Um, my my end goal was um, leadership and development, man. Like I, you know, my, I wanted to be uh, a consultant. My uncle told me this years ago when I first moved back home. He said, "Nephew, uh, if you're gonna do anything, be a consultant. You get to charge what you want." Um, and you get to do what you want. And so I was like, okay, well, you know, what the hell am I going to do? Like, <laughs> you know, like, what am I really good at? And so one of my friends brought this to my attention. He said, man, you've been preparing for leadership since you was a kid. And I never really thought about it like that. I had an old supervisor that I had talked to who I'm good friends with. And she even said, she said, you never realized how much power you had and how you led a team. She said, when you came in with an attitude and was, you know, on one, she said, you affected the whole team. And I was like, well, I, you know, at that time, I'm an undergrad, younger, I didn't care, I didn't know any better. I'm just like, I, I want what I want, I'm selfish. Um, and so out of that, man, being uh, exposed to toxic leaders uh, and being uh, uh, exposed to effective leaders, it's really what still, man, and put that fire in me to, you know, really want to do it. Um, and I really wanted to start with self, right? Like, I, if you can't lead yourself, you can't lead anybody else. Uh, and so I, you know, began my, you know, my self-discovery uh, and my leadership journey, uh, which led me to, uh, you know, to this fantastic doctoral program we in. Um, and I wanted to, you know, it just really expand my knowledge base and really look at it uh, and get to the bottom of it. Because a lot of my um, background is in um, is in clinical work. So my undergrad is from Florida and uh, in psychology, and then my master's is in psychology from GCU. And, you know, those that don't know, me and Jay are both in doctoral programs at GCU. So um, I, I, I got in the game, man, to really... Lopes up. <laughs> uh, I got in the game, man, to really learn, man, and really try to help people because um, it's just some piss poor leaders, bro. And let's call it what it is. You know, it's some piss poor leaders that I have just doing damage to organizations, man. They're doing damage to people. And nobody's calling it into question. Nobody is really... Uh, trying to help people, man, like help people be better leaders. I sat in leadership trainings, bro, where I'm in there with executive directors, like executive level leaders, and to hear their thought process and to hear how they're managing people, bro, I'm just like, this is insane. And this is what y'all pay people 60, 80, $100,000 to do, and they trash, you know? <laughs> that, that is trash, bro. Like, and we need, I mean, literally, man, I've, I've had it out. In trainers, man, and like really call people on their bias, call people out on their leadership because I'm like, if you really leading like that, and we in this intimate setting, I can only imagine what you're doing when ain't nobody really looking at you and can't nobody really check you on, you know, because because employees are afraid to really stand up because they they job scared, right? I, I need my job, I need to make money, I got a family to support, I got right things to do, so I'm not gonna really say anything, so that becomes passive, and then now we are you know, allowing people to do whatever they want to do. But um, yeah, man, to make a long story short, bro, uh, while I was in undergrad, uh, I wasn't doing too well, right? Um, I was, you know, uh, not an ideal student, so to speak, and I struggled. And uh, uh, my mom, who since transitioned, uh, my mom asked me, you know, well, son, how you doing? You know, how your grades or whatever. And I said, well, mom, they're not too good. And, you know, instead of ridiculing me or, or anything like that, she just said, son, do better. And so, you know, I took that and um, eventually I got my act together and, you know, of course, you know, got out of FAMU. It took, it took me 12 years to get out, but that's here nor there. But what I did was I took what she said and I just, you know, I, I honed in on it and I had a, a, a co-worker 
who used to hear me say it all the time and I never really thought about it. She said, you need to put that on a shirt. And uh, for my birthday, man, about three years ago now, um, you know, I put it on a hoodie. Uh, my good friend Felicia uh, was able to create me a hoodie. And, and to be honest with you, bro, that signature red hoodie that, that I did uh, those years ago was trash. Like it didn't come out well. She was like, I don't like it. You know, she said, I'm gonna give it to you for free. I say, well, I'm still gonna wear it. Like, you know, I first of all, going to DC is cold as hell and I, <laughs> I need something. And I made a video, man, and people started hitting me up about the hoodie. And it was like, yo, you know, uh, where can I get that hoodie? And then things start like developing from there. Uh, and so I'm like, I really need to hone in and get focused and do things like that. Uh, and so that's how Do Better was developed. Um, and that's how the leadership um, consulting and, and coaching business really was developed, man, out of just um, my mom helping me, you know, telling me to get my life together, basically. Well, you know, it's funny thing is that oftentimes things, lightning, you can catch it in a bottle, but it's only going to be once in a lifetime. Wow. And when we, when we talk about these items, you know, oftentimes we are our biggest self-critic. So to us, we're saying, oh man, it's not good enough. However, the world perceives it a different way because perception is our reality. And, you know, you coming out with do better saying, hey, it, you know, it's trash to you. It was treasure. You moved on. And now you have edifying and power alongside do better clothing. Wow. Wow, yeah. man. That's that's awesome. Now, additionally, I, I met you about a month ago, two months ago. Yeah, it's been by. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, Boy, it feels like it was just yesterday. <laughs> man, but 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 here's the thing, man. Uh, we were talking, uh, a coworker of mine and, and myself, and and I'm like, yo, man, like I don't know what to talk about, but but you told me we're just gonna build on it, and it takes me back to the conversations when we met, and we were just we were just talking about our experiences, and. Funny thing is, is that oftentimes we don't, again, we don't understand or value how impactful our experiences are to others because our journey is our journey. However, there's others that are trying to get to where we are. Yeah. So, man, that's, that's a great story, man. Tell me, tell me a little bit more about how, what, what they were saying that, that was so impactful when you would walk into a room and you would lead people. Um, let me make sure I understand. So what people would say when I'm in the trainings or when I actually lead people. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about, about the power that you had, according to other people, the perception of other people's. Oh man. Like, have you ever seen somebody that like, when they come in a room, like they could change the atmosphere of the room. Yeah. So like, it, it was kind of like that. Um, and I didn't really understand it. Cause at the time, you know, very young in the game, man. And, you know, uh, work with the state. And, you know, for me, it was just a job, you know, but um, I worked that job for about seven years. It got me through undergrad. And uh, it, it's just, it was, it was, it was crazy, man, how like I could be pissed off and not like, and not say nothing. And then the whole unit would just kind of be quiet, man. Like my team would just, you know, they'd be like, what's wrong with JT? You know, or him and, you know, him and uh, Burt beefing or, you know, and then the days where I'm like live and in color, it's like everybody, you know, we crying, we want to go to lunch, we want to do whatever. Uh, and so it, it it was crazy to like really think about it, like, you know, reflect on it and see it and, and really understand how much power that was. And so when I switched jobs, because um, I left there and I started my, um, you know, my clinical work. So I became a, a pretty much a mental health counselor, so to speak. And um working with young people in DJJ. And at this point, I'm gonna tell everybody, man, you gotta be careful what you ask for in life because you you just might get it. And it, it might not look like what you thought it was. And when I got in the game with DJJ, bro, like I was like, yo, I wanna work with these kids, you know, they you know, they need help, you know, and I really wanna help them or whatever. And not understanding that dynamic and how deep trauma is, uh, how deep the system is. Um, and some of these kids, man, was just, you know, they struggled. Uh, and so I was there about, I think, four months before I had transitioned, but those are the most impactful four months of my clinical uh, career, bro. And 
you know, working with those young kids, man, like really helped grow, um, you know, my leadership because at the time too, um, for those who don't know, I'm a Mason. So I was um, like third in charge in my lodge. So working with those kids, bro, and then leading the lodge, like I was being hypocritical because the things I'm teaching and educating on, I wasn't practicing what I preached. And so I got called to the carpet on that stuff. And so I had to begin to really assess myself and say, how you go in here and work with these kids, man? And, and you don't even do your own work. You know, you can't tell you can't tell the kid, well, if you got a problem with somebody, you know, you need to go to that man and work out that problem. But I got beef with somebody and I don't even address it. You know, I just don't even try to have a grown man conversation about it. And so, you know, a lot of that stuff, you know, it kind of happened like that. When I came to work, you know, people were excited to see me. And I'm not saying that every day was a great day. Like, don't get that twisted. But definitely enjoy my time. Um, even when I transitioned um, to being a contract manager and I met some very dope people that, that had their own um, nonprofits and things like that. They, I've had somebody tell me, they said, we've never seen um, a man in this position. And especially somebody that does what you do. Um, at one point I was running the whole program by myself because my um, coworker was out and bro, I had to change the dynamic of that program in a matter of months. Like we did like monthly, um, conference calls. This was well before zoom. Uh, and you know, I changed the dynamic, bro. Like people were excited to get on the call. They were excited to talk about the work that they were doing and we all learned from each other. So when I'm going on site visits, it's like, you know, a cousin at a barbecue. It's like cousin, you know what I mean? Like you show because <laughs> they put a name. Hey, yeah. give me some of them ribs, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That plate with that mac and cheese on the side over there. <laughs> mac and cheese, man. I remember that oh, back in Arizona, man. People were like, "What you know about that mac and cheese from the Southern Hospitality?" Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, hey, man. Uh, so. You mentioned something very important, and I want to ask you a question about this, man. So you're Mason. Yeah. Is Does National Treasure do the masonry justice, or is there a lot of myths in that movie about the masonry? Um, I'll just say, you know, as always, anybody tell you to be one, ask one, man. But what I will say is that there are a lot of hidden messages and a lot of hidden meanings. Um, National Treasure, I actually like, um, I actually like the first one better than I do the second one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's some good stuff, man. Um, but I'll tell you, man, masonry is a way of life. Like masonry really, as a young man, like really shaped me, uh, and molded me because I met some of the most intellectual brothers I've ever met in my life. Yep. They challenged me, man, intellectually to my core. When I mean literally like, you know, just broke me down, man. Like not in a bad way. Like I remember um, Dr. Cornell West uh, going uh, going to Florida State to do a lecture, and one of my brothers had like free tickets. Well, I, I think they were free. I don't remember, but they're like, "Yo, JT, we want you to come." So it's like three of the most intellectual brothers I know in the lodge, and then myself. And I'm like a kid, man, because I'm like one. You know, I got an opportunity to see Dr. West in person that I had missed that opportunity when he was at FAMU years prior to that, and then two. I had so many questions, you know, and I'm around, they having conversations and I'm lost, bro. Like, I'm like, man, I don't even know what, what they talking about. Like this, this sound crazy. You know, like they're like, JT, what you think? I'm like, well, I, I mean, I, I don't really know what y'all talking about. So it made me have to go read um, and do my own work. Right. And so I, I began to, you know, be able to add value uh, when I did my own work, you know? And so um, uh, shout out to, you know, to the foe, um, them boys made me, man. Like they, even to this day, like we actually, um, I had texted you the dates and stuff, but we actually have a zoom call on Friday. Um, and what, a, one of the things that we've been doing because we had a couple of brothers to transition, um, you know, to be with ancestors. And so, um, we're trying to get together just more often, um, virtually or whatever, because, you know, I've had brothers literally crying, man, saying like, I'm tired of coming to funerals, man. Like I'm tired. We keep talking about stuff, but we never do it. And mm -hmm. so I just took the initiative and was like, yo, let's get together, man. Like, let's, I don't care if it's five people on the call, you know, um, and I just did my part. Uh, and so it showed you the love that we have for each other and, and, you know, just the overall development that they were able to pour into me, man. But yeah, National Treasure was good, man, but I ain't giving <laughs> Yeah, no, I kind of figured, I kind of figured you, you, you'd, uh, You'd, you'd answer that way because, again, 
Uh, if you really want to know what it's like, you got to ask, you got to ask a Mason himself, right? And uh, yeah. there, there's a lot of stuff that can't be disclosed. I, I understand that. But one of the biggest things that I do know is the universal G. And, mm-hmm. and that universal G, I mean, we talked about that uh, most recently in another conversation, a buddy of mine and myself. And, you know, we were discussing, you know, the state of our nation and, and, and the divide, um, you know, but, but ultimately, ultimately, they're not asking you to choose a side. They're just asking you to believe in the higher power. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, man, that's that's awesome, man. I got more more love and respect for you, man. <laughs> the, the feeling is mutual, bro. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, I was kind of sad, um, not to go back on the election thing, but I was kind of sad that you didn't really win, bro, because I was rooting for you. Um, because I, I saw from my initial conversation, and, and let me just say this, because I want people to understand this. Like, I'm I'm so introverted that if you would have never said nothing to me, I would have never said nothing to you. Like, I said that the entire week. And like probably said very few words, but that would have hindered me from a just this relationship, but the learning process of what we got from that experience, right? Um, and just uh, you know, you hit me up and was like, "Yo, bro, come to the room." You know what I mean? We gonna go grab some food. Just that interaction, man. Just that olive branch that you extended um, brought us here. But what it also did was it opened the doorway so I could really see who you were as a person. Right. You know. Before, you know, anything about a campaign, you know, any of all that, like, you are a genuine person, you know what I mean? Like, Thank you. genuinely good person that wants to do right. And this is, for people that don't know, this is from meeting a man, you know, for a whole week and being in the same room and having genuine conversations. And I think that that's what's lost um, in this whole dynamic of things is that we don't have authentic, genuine conversations with people to really try to figure people out. People, you know, try to be too conniving, man, and try to like hide things, but you didn't hide nothing. You didn't spare no punches. <laughs> like, oh, no, this me, you know, this where it's at, man. And you know, what's up, you know, let, let's talk, you know, uh, uh, and I appreciate that. No, nah, man. Hey, the, the pleasure is all mine. And, and, uh, what, what JT's talking about is, uh, and he mentioned this earlier, is that him and I are part of a doctoral program with Grand Canyon University. And, you know, it just turns out that we, we are both very similar in our studies. Uh, moreover, what we're talking about here is is just the connection, man. And, and funny you say that because in America, you know, we, 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 Corona has actually brought the family unit back, I think, in my personal opinion. You know, we're, 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 we're stuck in our houses, getting to know our kids, getting to know our family members, our friends, you know, uh, one of the things that we keep on seeing is all these people walking the neighborhoods, you know, just walking the dogs, going on bike rides. I'm like, am I in 1970 or 1980 or something? I mean, <laughs> wow, this is happening all over again. Wow. Speak to that, man. What do you, what are you seeing on top of that? Uh, you know, we talked about, you know what you're seeing in regards to Corona, but I mean, are do you vouch? Is that something similar that you're that's going on in Florida as well? That families are coming together. Um, yeah, man, uh, bro. When I tell you, like, I wanted to go, I wanted to go buy a bicycle because I started seeing people like posting about it, you know, getting miles in, riding a bike, and and then I automatically went back when I was a kid, and uh, you know, I used to ride bikes and stuff like that. Side note, so I've wrecked everything on two wheels. I just want to say that. And I had several accidents on bicycles, so it's not funny. But I was like, yo, I want to get a bike, right? And I mean, literally, Walmart was sold out. Like, all these stores were sold out. Bikes was costing $500,000. I'm like, when did bicycles get this expensive? Yeah. And what you started seeing was, was that, like, groups of people getting together riding their bike. You know what I mean? Um, People started workout programs, you know, at-home workout programs group workouts, you know, um, still socially distancing. Um, I seen people, you know, hitting the pavement. Uh, I actually, you know, for a while, uh, I have a Planet Fitness membership. And so I stopped going um, because the gyms were closed, right? And so um, I was like, it had gotten to the point where, you know, life had kind of like put a little pressure on me. And that turned into like, um, when we start talking about manifestations of like stress and stuff, stuff like that it turns into physical things too so I like started having like little chest pains and stuff and I'm like yo like I'm, I'm not trying to have no heart attack or no stroke and then I was like let me get my fat butt up and what I what I did was I created uh, me and my brother 
Uh, we call it reflective lunches. So what we, what we did was um, I would call him on the duo. So if you got iPhone, FaceTime. And um, I would go for a walk, man. Like I would walk from where I stay at to the, uh, to the post office. It's like a mile. So I'll just walk there and walk back. And me and my brother will talk. We wouldn't even really talk about work, man. We'll just talk about other stuff. Um, and then we'll fix lunch together. So like I would try to make me a little smoothie or something or fix me a little healthy lunch. And, you know, as long as the weather permitted, um, every day, man, that clockwork, because he was working from home as well. So everything like every day at clockwork, man, you know, well, we would, you know, we were on it. And uh, I just noticed a lot of people um, getting their miles in. <clears throat> uh, like uh, my fraternity brothers, I think some of them were saying they was clocking in. They was, they was running like 30 miles a week, man. I was like, first of all, I barely get in five miles a week. So <laughs> I don't know how y'all do that. But it has definitely um, allowed people to find alternatives um, to get healthy. Um, and, and when I mean healthy, I mean spiritually, physically, emotionally, um, all of those things, because we have lived such a fast paced life that we never really slowed down to really just take a breath, man, to just chill, uh, to really focus on the things that are most important. And Corona put the brakes on, bro. When I mean put the brakes, I mean like slammed on brakes. And now people are really assessing what's important now you got time to work out. Well, before you didn't really have time to work out. Now you got time to actually cook lunch and dinner because you home, you know, and you either, hey, you can't afford to eat out or you're not really trying to go in the streets anyway. Um, now, unless you're sporting, you got Uber Eats or DoorDash or something like that, you know, you go, you go order that, but it's going to take you 45, 50 minutes sometimes to get that food. So you better off just trying to do right and, and cook your own food, man. But definitely have seen uh, significant changes in people's mindset. Um, and, and if in the in the physical part as well, um, hitting the streets, man, getting these workouts in, bro. When I tell you, like bicycles was missing, um, workout gear was gone from Walmart, bro. Like I'm talking, like I, everything you can name that you like. Oh well, you know I'm a, I'm gonna go get a sauna suit. You probably better off trying to get it off Amazon. You know what I'm saying? Like it was just that crazy how um, people just converted and they're like just trying to get right. You know, just trying to. You know, we can't really get summertime fine at this point, but, you know, they're they trying to get one winter fine, I guess. I don't know. Man, you know, you, you I know that's right when it comes to things being out and sold out and not being able to get it. I mean, I still remember that time when 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 COVID hit back in March, man. And, and man, I couldn't even find toilet paper. <laughs> wow. Wow. Like that in my life. Like. I understand, I understood like parents that have, you know, more than one child. Cause if you have kids, you know that when them kids home, they're gonna use up everything you got. Yeah. So, um, a lot of that. So I get that part of it, man. But like just to go into like a published bro and like shells are like like bare, I'm like, yo, this is insane. Like I've yeah. never, I'm like, what's the purpose? And then, you know, of course the hand sanitizers. And the Lysol, man, and hand soap. It's just like, yo, are y'all serious? Um, but I really do feel like people are just hoarding products, bro. Because when when I think about it, like, I'm in Florida, so we have hurricane season every year. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Even during, like, when there's a hurricane coming and stuff like that, bro, it, 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 it don't look like that, you know? And that's when yeah. you need to, excuse me, like, stock up on supplies and stuff. It was never like that, you know. And like now, this like this is insane, bro. Like it, it brought me back to we had a hurricane about uh, three or four years ago, I believe. Um, it didn't really hit us that bad, bro. When I tell you, gas stations was out of gas. Mm -hmm. Like it was so scarce, man. I was like, once I got gas, I'm like, I'm not driving nowhere. Like I'm gonna just chill because you literally had to get on an app to find gas. Um, to, you know, just be able to put gas in your car, you know, and people still had to go to and from work. And and at this time I was working like almost, I was living like an hour away from my office. So, um, you know, I had to put a lot of miles on my car, but it's just insane how when you create um, that level of anxiety and scarcity mentality, what people would do, you know, uh, I mean, like they running, uh, stores were running out of chicken, you know what I'm saying? Like running out of meat, like it was crazy. Like I go to Publix, and I'm like, yo, ain't I, you know, ain't really, if you're trying to, you know, do healthy stuff, like sometimes it wasn't available. Um, and it's just weird, man, how all of that stuff really played out. But this toilet paper foolishness, bro, I don't, 
Like, what did you do to us talk to the police? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. I mean, you know, as a nation, there's there's many opinions of our nations from outside countries and so forth. And, uh, you know, it, it makes us reflect on who we are as a nation. You know what I'm saying? Like, but nonetheless, you know, COVID has really brought out some diamonds in the rough. Uh, yeah. and, and, and it makes us, for those that know and want to do better, <laughs> pun intended, uh, yeah. you know, we, 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 we talk about the necessities. And this is what, in my opinion, the government should really focus on being universal, food, utilities, and health. You know, if we need, a, if we really want to do better as a nation, then we need to focus on these three things because they're scarce. You know, I, I, I came upon a message recently, and and that that message is about time is limited, and you know, when individuals become the victim, you know, well, you know, I just got diagnosed with uh, cancer, you know. I don't know that feeling and I, and I can't empathize. Nonetheless, would you agree that you and I are both dying at the same time? I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. Would you agree that we're both dying while we're living? Yeah. It's inevitable. Yeah. Death is where we're going. So we're all going to get there. What we need to do is we need to flip the script and say, you know what? I'm going to live every single day the best way I know I can. Bro, I got I got something deep for you, bro. As you was talking, I'm finna, I'm finna put this on you. I re- I don't really talk about this like this, but it's important because um, we're talking about like health um, and we're really talking about mindset, right? Yeah. So um, my, my mother, who has since transitioned, my mother had two strokes um, uh, when I was about eight years old, okay? So I was a caregiver as a, as a young man. Mm-hmm. And... When when my mom my mom did you know after the strokes and stuff they go through rehab so she did rehab for about I don't remember the exact time I'm gonna just say nine months it could have been six it could have been a little longer I'm not sure but my mom did rehab and um, she got home and you know our whole lives changed I'm the only child it's always me and my mom um, however my mom was adamant and her mindset was like you know I'm gonna get my health back I'm gonna get you know the use and activity of my limbs back like I'm not gonna be paralyzed forever right. And so the mindset, every, you know, we did at home therapy. She would walk every day, you know, like we we made grave attempts to really get her health back. But, you know, after a while, bro, um, it just, I think it just set in to the point where she realized it's like, I'm not going to be back normal again. And so that turned into um, what people don't know is, is that um, I realized my mom was depressed um, while I was in college. But I didn't really realize until later after she said something to me, um, you know, you have to understand, too, my mom wasn't working. She was disabled mm-hmm. in the night. Bro. And we're talking about 2006. You know what I'm saying? So we're talking about, yes, yeah, she didn't work. We lived off of, you know, disability and Social Security. Um, and, you know, the little bit of child support that my dad was providing um, to my mom. But the thing about it was my mom had called me and, you know, my mom had contemplated suicide. Like, she told me about it. And I'm just like, whoa, you know, didn't really see that coming. But because of life, bro, um, it it had a toll on her mentally. You know, mm-hmm. uh, we, you know, she wasn't able to get the best healthcare in the world, you know, based on her circumstances. But, you know, mentally, she just had kind of checked out, you know. Um, even, you know, what I will say is this. At some point, you know, she had kind of checked out. But then at other points where, you know, she was all the way checked in. Um, and I tell people, like, even even the day my mom transitioned, bro, I tell people, I don't care what anybody says, she fought until the day she couldn't fight anymore in terms of fighting to live. She may not have done everything right, you know, in terms of, you know, eating right, exercising and stuff like that. But in terms of, like, I'm going to live every day, like, every day I wake up, you know, I'm going to do something, you know, it doesn't matter how little it is. Um, she definitely did that. And so when we talk about, you know, this type of thing, man, like, you know, we have to get up and fight every single day, bro. Because if not, depression is real, man. Like sadness yeah. is real. Um, that thing could jump on you, bro, and it won't let you go. Um, and then then you start having like suicide ideations and you know, all these thoughts and things like that. And that's not the answer. You know, it's not the answer. Thank God, you know, she didn't do any of that. 
Um, but there are people that, you know, contemplate this thing day in and day out. And like you said, there's one guarantee in life and that's death. Like we are going to leave here at some point. Now, where we go and what happens with all that, I, you know, I can't tell you I ain't never been. Um, but what I will say is that um, our day is going to come, you know, whether they come, you know, sooner or later, it, we have a day. Um, but we have to live each day, though. Like we have to do um, what's important for us every day. And we have to make sure that we give it everything that we got, um, you know, and this does not mean it's always all gas, no breaks. Like I believe in self-care. I believe in taking breaks. I believe in peace and relaxation. I believe in all that. But I also believe in, you know, putting in the work and making it happen. Yep. Uh, and so, you know, I, I just wanted to drop that on you, bro, because as you were talking, like I was really thinking about like, you know, how, uh, you know, just these negative thoughts, man, can take advantage of you. And oh, if man. you don't do what you're supposed to do, man, like that could turn bad quick. You know, um, life life has a funny way of, of doing, bringing people together, but it also has a funny way of getting us to talk about real life situations, man. And I'll tell you what, man, I'll be the first to tell you, I've, I've been, I've hit rock bottom before, man. And uh, you're, you're, you're definitely right when, when uh, you focus on that negative energy, you focus on that, on that depressed, depressive, uh, you focus on that state of mind it'll get you, man. And it'll get you. I mean, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, man, it, it, it looked very promising to me, you know? Uh, uh, and one of these things that, that we need to do is we need to seek accountability partners, uh, you know, individuals that will call you from time to time. Hey, how you been? Hey, how you doing? Because the moment you're, I mean, you can have it all, mm-hmm. but you can still be empty inside. Oh, yeah. Man. That's deep. That's the you can have it all and still feel empty inside. I think um uh Deion Sanders said that Prime Time said that I think it was Prime because him and Young Jeezy were on a I think Jeezy started a new talk show or something like that. And Prime said that, like, you know, you got all this stuff and but you still feel lost, hopeless, like just by yourself, man. Like you feel empty. Um, and it, it's it's a crazy feeling, bro, that there are some people that don't get it. And then there are people that truly, truly understand where you're coming from. Right. And until you hit the bottom, like you, you, we too entitled, man. And we too spoiled to really understand what the bottom feel like. You know, um, I didn't come from, you know, uh, uh, privilege or nothing like that. Um, but I do realize, you know, uh, uh, what the bottom of the, what the bottom of the barrel feels like. Um, and it, it ain't no good feeling, bro. Um, yeah. And I talked to you about accountability partners. That was going to be a question to you, man. Like, what did you do to, like, you know, get your spirits up, man? Like, get you to a better place? Well, you know, again, I, I shout out to my to my buddy, Chewy. You know, sometimes there's individuals that come into your life at the perfect time. And, and, and that definitely occurred with me. Uh, I had just gotten divorced. And, you know, I had, you know, I'm not gonna blame anybody by myself, right? But, but uh, I didn't have the family situation that I wanted. I wanted to see my kids, you know what I'm saying? But, but you know, legal happens and 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 divorce happens and all that good stuff and <laughs> all that good stuff. <laughs> uh, I didn't mean to say that, but but what what ended up happening was that my buddy came by to to visit, and him and I would always do these little jam sessions, and, and you know he he would play guitar, play, play drums. Uh, and I, and I think I'm singing in my mind. It sounds great. I don't know, <laughs> but, but I, I'm way off key. Uh, I need auto tune, but, but yeah, dude, he showed up and he was like, Hey man, let's go, let's go have some lunch, you know, let's go talk and so forth. And sure enough, man, he came at the perfect time because everything looked beautiful to me. You know what I'm saying? A, a, a nine millimeter looked great. And, uh, I was just one of, it was just one of those times, perfect time and perfect, uh, perfect opportunity for him to get me out of the house, you know, and, uh, the rest is history. We talk about it now and he, you know, he's like, man, I love you. I love you too, bro. You know? Um, and I will always value that, you know, you see it in films numerous times, you know, like the bottom, the bottom, you know, like every they've hit rock bottom, but when you really hit it, shoot you better you better pray to god get on your knees and say you know what i'm sorry for everything i've done and and ask for forgiveness and move on man but it, it's easier said than done but yeah. uh but from that moment on 
uh, you know, I, I've I've been told similar to what you've been told. Uh, you light up a room, you know, you're a leader, um, and and oftentimes, you know, it's it's a double edged sword because you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. But nonetheless, you have to be aware of how you inspire others. I think that's the purpose of of this podcast because we need to tell our story. We need to be able to write the narrative before others write it for us. Yeah. So yeah. JT, man, where are you going? What's your future looking like? What, what, what are some projects you're working on, man? Uh, so the, the major project is trying to finish this doctoral program. Um, my, my dream, and I'm hopeful that this is going to happen, but my dream is to finish this job on time, man. Like, for undergrad and grad, man, it just took me so long to really, like, finish up. Um, and I don't really want that for, um, you know, for this doctoral program. So I'm very hopeful that, um, you know, all of my work gets gets done in a timely manner, gets approved. Um, once that's done, man, and, and that's over with, then I'll be able to really truly focus on, um, you know, building the brand and the business all the way out. Uh, it's a struggle to be able to do a lot of it. Um, and you and I both understand that, like just the reading and the writing and the research um, and just, you know, the time that you need to just chill, you know, like people want me to develop content. Uh, and I try to explain like, yo, that, that, that takes a lot of energy for me. Right. Because I don't just put out on BS, you know what I mean? Like I have to think things through and really like, I make a conscious effort to put out good stuff if I'm going to do it or say good stuff. Uh, so that's a struggle, but um, finish this doctoral program, bro, on time, uh, get, uh, get that dissertation done. I don't care, you know, what it look like for real. I just want to be done with it. Um, and then, you know, build a business out, um, you know, hopefully get some partnerships with some people. Um, but my overarching goal, man, is to be able to, um, be on a collegiate level, man, like be a professor, um, still be able to do, uh, I, I want to be a professor, but I also want to be able to still um, work in the workforce and still do consulting work. So technically like three jobs for real. Um, but I want to be able to um, connect the dots for students because I've done some work uh, with college students before. And, you know, these kids now, they built a little bit different than, than what we're built. Uh, and so they really need real life uh, experiences and they really need the truth. Uh, and so being able to have that real life um, perspective uh, is, is, to me, is just a, a wonderful approach uh, to really kind of have. Because uh, if we look at it, you know, that's the pro purpose of internships and externships and things like that. Um, but I want to be able to connect the dots for these young people, uh, these young adults, uh, you know, as we move forward. Um, you know, and then, of course, you know, really building a brand out. I have, you know, more uh, T-shirt ideas and stuff like that. Um, and then it quite as a kill, man. I've I've completed the um, the manuscript to my first book. Um, I'm just uh, I've been pump faking, so to speak, about the book cover. So um, I've been just trying to decide if I really want to get some professional pictures done or um, just have one of my homeboys like really, really, truly create something um, out of you know thin air for me. Um, but that's really the hold up. Um, I'm probably gonna self publish because I don't have a lot of money. Uh, unless somebody want to give me a deal or something, pay me some money. <laughs> so, <laughs> JT Yards is looking for sponsorships. Hit them up, yeah. man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, but the book is long overdue, man. But it's uh, it's the first one. It's it's uh, it's gonna be good. Uh, it is good. Um, I put my heart into it, man. I, I but I needed to get it out. Um, and I tell anybody, man, if you have a story, man, get you a computer, use your cell phone, use a pen and paper, whatever you need, and just start just start writing you could you could um rearrange reconstruct you could build you could do whatever after you put it where it needs to be first you know what i mean and that's what i did i actually started the crazy thing is is i started writing uh years ago man when i was still in tallahassee still working with the state but i just i didn't i didn't take it anywhere and so when i actually started um decided that i wanted to do the book um i took everything that i had then and i just put it in one place read over it, made it like started making adjustments and built the rest out from there. And so I didn't necessarily start from scratch, um, but I did have a lot of work I needed to do, even going through the editing process. Um, it took a lot out of me, even though the book isn't like large or nothing like that, but just the content is so deep and so rich for me that it, 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 I have to go to a special place to be able to get through it. Um, but this yeah, man, book, 
Uh-huh. This book, what 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 is it focused on? Is it fiction, nonfiction? Is it is it self co? Is it a coaching book? Bro, this this is gonna this is the craziest thing. It's gonna sound crazy, but when somebody brought it to my attention, I thought that it was far fetched and they were lying to me. So uh, the book is like a memoir slash like self help slash coaching, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but the bread and butter of it, like the meat of it, it's really about like child neglect. And it was weird. It was really weird when uh, the editor him uh, him and I were going back and forth, and he was like, "Yo, your book about like like neglect, like you know, it's bad or whatever." And I'm like, "No, that's that's not what it is." Because I'm looking at like the the memoir self help part of it, and bro, when I really looked at it, because I try to tell people like I'm just only talking about my experiences. I'm not talking about I'm not talking bad about anybody. Um, because when people read it, uh, you're going to hear me talk about my dad. And so there are some people, uh, particularly my paternal side, that are not going to like it. But at the end of the day, um, you know, I'm talking about my experiences. I'm not bashing nobody or anything like that. But it, the book is really going to be um, just this platform or this space to really have these candid conversations, bro, about, um, you know, manhood and about, uh, you know, coming from, you know, a particular place and having to deal with some of the things that I had to deal with, man, and like having these certain experiences and how they affected me, you know, how they affected my relationships, how they affected, you know, uh, the issues with, you know, my daughter or whatever, and like how I deal with that. Uh, and so it, it's going to be uniquely different because I'm coming from a place, um, I'm in child welfare, and, and you know that from my presentation, but um, I'm coming from a place that child welfare or, you know, we'll go with social work or whatever, the clinicians, they don't, they don't take this route. And so that's what made this book unique in terms of really talking about this side of child welfare, so to speak, uh, in this unique way. Um, and it surprised me because I never thought about it like that. I never even considered that, um, you know, my dad was really neglectful, so to speak. You know, when we put it in context and we use it based on, um, you know, a maltreatment index and those different types of things. Like, you know, emotional neglect is a very real thing. You know what I mean? I may not have been abused or nothing like that, but when we talk about like emotional neglect, um, it's very real. Uh, and kids now, and I say um, uh, generationally, like people that, that are our age and stuff like that, there are things that we need emotionally that our parents don't have the capacity to be able to give us. Yeah. Um, you know, and so being able to talk about that and put it in a place where it's in a safe place to be able to really have a conversation, I think is good. And I think this is what the book will be able to offer. Um, and then I, um, I ended with something um, very powerful. Um, and, and I think that uh, uh, people appreciate it you know, with the way that I, the way that I end the book, but, um, but don't, yeah. Don't give out, don't give away the ending. I'm not. Oh, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not gonna give it away. I promise. <laughs> I, 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 I'm definitely gonna order your book because what I want to see is I want to be able to get the book and the shirt, the do better and the book, uh, yeah. a, along with the uh, autographed, uh, uh, an autographed copy. So I got you. I, I where am I gonna be able to find this? Am I gonna be able to find this on Amazon or a certain website? Where where, where can people go to go buy your book by JT Yarns? And what's the title of it? So um, the the book is going to be called Do Better, uh, unless I really change the title. But right now it's called Do Better. Um, I'm definitely probably going to um, do Amazon. Um, so I'm really very new to this whole publishing situation. Like I don't really have all the details. And I've been taking this process like step by step. So like once the cover is done and stuff like that, then, you know, then I'll be able to like move to the next phase to figure out like publishing and like how that really works. But I definitely want to do Amazon. Um, I currently have my own website, which is edifyingempower.com. Um, right now, you could go in there and schedule a free consultation with me, um, as well as, um, you know, buy any uh, Edifying Empower apparel. So shirts, hats, you know what I mean, book bag, um, you know, those things are on there. Um, COVID did slow down shipping a little bit, so uh, some things just take a little bit longer. But if there's something that you, you know, that you want, just hit me up on the personal because um, I also partner with um, Felicia, uh, which is one of my good friends. Um, and she makes sure that 
anything that I need specifically made in terms of shirts or whatever, like she'll take care of it. Mm -hmm. uh, she does she does a fantastic job. Like right now I have about six t-shirts she just did for me that are sitting on my table right now um, because they're for somebody to do something for me. Um, and she took care of it, man. She she took care of me. So if there's something specific that you need that you don't see on the website, definitely hit me up uh, and let me know. And then, you know, of course I'll be dropping once the book and everything gets to where it needs to be, um, pre-orders and all that other stuff. I'll figure all that stuff out. Um, you know, I'll let you know, bro, the world will know about it. Um, and I, I, I want to do some book tours because apparently, you know, that's how, that's how things work. So yeah. I definitely want to, you know, do some book tours and stuff like that, but I'm not, I ain't nobody famous. So I don't know if people going to come for real, but I hope they come. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what, man, I'll definitely put out the word on my end here in South Texas for you. Um, my other, my other question is, and this is my personal question is, is yeah. the, is there going to be an audio book? That's how I read. <laughs> and, uh, um, shout out to, to my homie Pierre, man. Pierre is in uh in Phoenix, man. And uh P, I think he's dropping like his audio book. And when I saw that, I was like, you know what? I'm probably gonna have to really consider that. Um, and then I was also listening to um David Goggins. Um, I listened to some YouTube videos and they were talking about like his audio book and like how he did his. And so I think, you know, once we get it in print, you know, because I want to do ebook as well as hard copies and stuff like that. Once that's done, then um, I definitely want to um, do an audio book because um, people people listen to a lot of books as opposed to read. Um, and, then, you know, the travel and stuff like that makes things a lot easier. So and I think with, if I do the, not if when I do the audio book, um, I kind of probably want to set it up the way that David Goggins did it. Um, to add in some of those extra things, some of that reflective piece and um, that kind of thing or whatever. So, uh, yeah, it's it's in the making, bro. Um, but I'm taking it one step at a time. So, you know, but the audio book will definitely be on the way. I, I, I think that's why podcasts do so well, because, I mean, I ain't got time to be reading. <laughs> <laughs> right, bro. You know, I, I tried to read in the gym one time, bro. It was uh, yeah. I was like, yeah, just give me something to listen to. I, I'll get through <laughs> JT man uh it's been a pleasure speaking with you today man great catching up with you uh one last message uh to any kid out there listening to any uh, adult listening anybody in, in listening uh what do you tell them two words do better bro <laughs> that's three that's three do better bro <laughs> Um, but I, I know you said two words, man, but I, you know, I'm going to leave with this, man. Um, life is going to punch you in the face, right? It's going to punch you square in the face, man. It's going to put you on your bottom. Um, you're going to have to learn how to get up and keep fighting. Um, anything worth having is worth fighting for. And so every day we get up, man, it's a different opportunity to really do what's right, um, to do what you need to do for you. And so you need to figure out what you need to do for yourself and then do it for yourself, right? You have to execute um, and, and get on a journey of self-discovery. Figure out who you are. Figure out who you are at the core without the degrees, without the clothes, without the cars, without all the other foolishness. Figure out who you are at your core. Figure out what you need. Get some people around you that's going to help you and support you and get you where you need to be. Um, and then pour into other people. Don't pour from an empty cup, but pour into other people so that way you don't leave leave people better than with the way that you found them. You know, that way you can give back to what was invested in you. That's what I got, brother. Brother, it's been a pleasure and an honor to have you here on my first podcast. It's been amazing. Uh, like like you said earlier, man, we're gonna build on it. And I think we have. We've definitely talked about very important ideas important conversations that need to be had uh, but most importantly we have a, a a bond that will never be broken and uh, i thank you for that thank you for being a friend thank you for uh definitely listening and thank you for helping me build this man i appreciate it jt yarns jt yarns everybody appreciate you bro have a great day man god All bless right. yeah.